Hi friends, happy Friday. Welcome to my channel and welcome if you are new here. I'm so excited that you stop by to watch today's weigh-in video. So before I head into my WW workshop, I just want to share with you a little bit of a recap of my week. So I had a pretty darn good week. It was good, really good for exercise. I ended up going to Jazzercise four times, and yes, I went yesterday. I know, I know, I told you I wasn't gonna go on Thursday anymore, and now I'm regretting it because I'm so sore. I actually went Wednesday and Thursday, so back-to-back -back days, and it was a pretty intense workout, so my legs are sore, my arms are sore, everything is sore, but I went and I'm glad that I was able to get in the exercise. I'm just really hoping it doesn't affect my weigh-in. But my food this week was pretty good. I had my weeklies on Saturday. I had cookies and all sorts of great things. And then the rest of the week, I maintained pretty darn well within my points. So overall, I had a great week, so I should be seeing some success on the scale. I'm just a little bit nervous because I'm super sore. And to be honest, I haven't felt very light. You know what I mean? Like light and airy like you want to feel this week. I felt a little bit, just a little bit heavy feeling. Maybe on the bloated side. I don't know. I've kind of felt that way this whole week. I've eaten a lot of salads because I meal prepped salads for the week. And sometimes that just, all those greens just kind of make me feel that way. So I'm crossing my fingers because let me just tell you, I deserve a loss on the scale. I deserve a good loss, to be completely honest, but we'll see what happens when I hop on the scale. So I'll be back to not only share my way and update, but let's talk all things WW Workshop. Hi friends, welcome back. I am out of my WW Workshop and I absolutely loved this week's topic. I think it's something that we don't talk about enough or maybe we don't think about enough and that is setting ourselves up for success. We decorate our homes. We make it comfortable for us. We buy our favorite blankets, our favorite pillows for our bed. But are we setting our home up for success on our weight loss journey? Or are we setting ourselves up for failure? And what I mean by that is, are we bringing things into our home that are going to derail us from our weight loss journey? Are you a chip person and you constantly have chips in your pantry? Or are you like me and you love sweets and you buy cookies and you tell yourself, I'm going to have one cookie per day and the next thing you know the entire pack is gone so are we setting ourselves up for success or are we setting ourselves up for failure so ww has six tips on how to set ourselves up for success so if you're a snacker it's really good to set out something in your visual site that's easy for you to get access to that's on plan so ww suggests that you set some fruit out where you're watching TV, whether that be your kitchen table, on your coffee table in the living room, where are you more likely to snack? So like I said, watching TV is a big time for snacking. So while you're sitting on your couch watching TV, set a bowl of fruit or veggies out on the table and leave it there. Berries, grapes, something that you can grab and snack on that is zero points or low points. That way you're not reaching for those chips or crackers or cookies that are going to derail you from your progress and really kind of add up on the smart points. Number two is super important. Pack your snacks. You guys know I do this all the time. I'm on the road a lot as a real estate agent, so I'm not always home to eat all of my meals and snacks. So pre-portion out your snacks. I have preached this, that it's best if you're going to buy a full bag of chips to go home, grab your food scale, weigh out a single portion, bag it up and put it somewhere where it's easily accessible for you. Because if you're in a hurry to get out the door, you're just going to grab the whole bag of chips and tell yourself that you're only going to eat one serving but we know that we don't always just eat one serving. So it's better if you plan ahead and you pre-package your food. This is everything. This is your fruits, your vegetables, your chips. If you're gonna grab a protein snack, bag up some lunch meat, maybe a cheese stick, hard boil your eggs in advance. Always have something on hand as far as snacks go that is easy, portable, and you can just grab and go. You'll stay on track a lot easier than if you're out and about and you're starving and you're just going to pick up the fastest thing that you can find at your local gas station or grocery store or restaurant. So pre-plan, pre-pack, 
pre-portion out your snacks. Number three, simplify your morning. If you are not a morning person, then pre-plan out your morning the night before. So for example, let's say that in the morning you wanna quickly put together an omelet. Put your eggs, your chopped veggies, your protein, all at the very front of your refrigerator. So when you open it up, it's the first thing that you see. You can even go as far as leaving out your cooking tools, such as your pans, your utensils. Have it all ready to go so when you wake up in the morning, you're reaching for that instead of reaching for something that's more convenient. If you have to chop your veggies and your protein up for your omelet in the morning and you're not a morning person, you guys, it's not gonna happen. So set yourself up for success, have it all ready to go so when you open your fridge, you're like, oh, my omelet. You grab it, your cooking tools are out, you make your omelet and you set your day off on the right foot. Number four, start writing. Leave a notepad and a pen or maybe some type of a journal or gratitude journal or even just your planner. I use the Erin Condren planner. It is linked down below for you guys and in there is a note section and I take a lot of notes. Sometimes I'll write myself little messages on the date in the calendar. I'll find a way to write notes in a calendar, a notepad, a gratitude journal, whatever you have. But write down every morning three things you're thankful for. And this could be as simple as the fact that you got out of a nice warm bed. Or maybe you're thankful for the dog curled up sleeping next to you or your beautiful children in the room across the hall. Every day, take a moment, it literally takes 10 seconds and write down somewhere three things that you're thankful for every day. It really just reminds us of our why and it reminds us why we're on this journey to begin with. Number five, get a little bit sneaky. If you can't keep your hands out of those cookies and chips in your pantry, don't put them at eye level. Don't put them where they're easily accessible for you. Put them away in a cabinet that you can't reach. If you're on the shorter side, and I see this a lot with my friends, especially my best friend who's a little bit on the shorter side, she cannot reach the top cabinet, so she would literally have to have someone else or get a step stool or a chair or put in a lot of effort to reach the snacks or food that she's put out of reach. And also, you guys, remember, out of sight, out of mind. Put those things that you're tempted by out of sight. Don't have them be the first thing you see when you open your fridge, your freezer, or your pantry. Put them away, stash them. And if that doesn't do the trick, if just stashing them out of sight doesn't work for you, get rid of them. Take them to your office, give them to a friend, and throw them away. It's okay to throw away food. You're sabotaging yourself by keeping food around that you can't resist eating. So it's better to waste that little bit of money and throw that food away rather than eating it and having to spend more money on Weight Watchers or working out or other ways to get rid of that food that you ate. So be sneaky about it, stash them, hide them, put them away, and at very worst case scenario, get rid of them. And number six is Q Act. Activity. So put your activity clothes, your workout clothes, your tennis shoes in a spot where you see them, maybe next to your alarm clock or put them on your dresser so when you're going to get socks or things out of your dresser, your workout clothes are right there. It mentally cues you that you should work out, that you should think about exercise. Put those things out where you can see them, that's going to give you that daily or constant reminder that you need to get in your exercise. My activity clothes are in my closet on the shelf right next to where I put my regular clothes. So whatever I'm going to wear the next day, my workout clothes are right next to that. So when I go in there to grab the clothes for the next day, I can't help but see my workout clothes sitting right there and it cues me to think about throwing in some activity. So let's talk about my way in. I just wanna say again, that is such a great topic. It's something that I'm thinking about implementing into my YouTube channel a little bit more is setting yourself up for success on your journey. I think it's so important. I know it's important for me. I can't bring sweets into the house that aren't WW friendly because when I'm hungry, or think I'm hungry, that's the first thing that I'm reaching for. So love this topic. So as I mentioned before I went into my workshop that I had a really good week. Yes, I used my weeklies. I worked out a ton. I busted my behind at Jazzercise. My food was pretty darn good for the entire week. I am extremely sore. I realized when I went to take my jacket off to weigh in that my arm is so sore, even sore than I thought. So 
I knew that maybe working out the day before weigh-in wasn't the best decision, but I just wanted to get in that extra bit of exercise. So with that being said, when I stepped on the scale, I lost 0.4. So I lost 0.4 last week. I lost 0.4 again this week. Am I happy that I had a loss? 100% absolutely. Am I annoyed that my loss was 0.4? 100% absolutely. Again, I feel like I should have lost more. I feel that I should be losing more than ounces every week. So it's a little bit frustrating. I guess I need to kind of reevaluate maybe what I'm eating because clearly it's not lack of exercise because I've been really good with my exercise. So maybe it's scaling down my day that I use my weeklies. Maybe it's changing up my foods a little bit. So I just need to do a little bit of deep diving into what I'm eating. So I think I'm going to spend some time doing that today. So with my frustration, I'm also really happy that I've lost every week so far in January, which was my goal starting this year. As you guys know, my goal is to lose 50 pounds in the year of 2020. So the fact that I'm losing every week is just getting me closer to that ultimate goal. I just wish it was a little bit more of a loss on the scale. So included in deep diving into my food, I'm also this next week not going to work out the day before weigh-in. And I was actually visiting with one of the other girls at my workshop and we were talking about exercise. And she says, oh my gosh, do not exercise the day before weigh-in because even if it's something as simple as a walk or even a low impact exercise, your body, your muscles will retain water and it's not going to show up on the scale. So she is now probably the 10th person that's told me that. So hello, Jen, pay attention, listen to people. So now I'm going to not work out the day before weigh-in. So I'm going to go to Jazzercise tomorrow, Saturday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, give my body a break on Thursday. And then hopefully Next week when I step on the scale, I see that little bit more loss because I feel like I deserve it with all the work that I've been putting in and I'm just not getting the rewards that I think that I should be on the scale. So it could be a multitude of things and I know my body has a mind of its own, which is super annoying, but you guys know that I'm the first one to stay positive. So although I'm a little frustrated, I'm also happy that I'm losing and I'm just going to tweak things a little bit to hopefully see even a bigger loss next week on the scale. So that's my week. That's my way in. I want to hear how your guys' week went. Was it what you expected when you stepped on the scale? Is there things that you need to take a closer look at or maybe change up a little bit to get a little bit more success on the scale? And what about setting your home up for success as well. So I think all of these things tie really well in together. So I'm going to really think about these things. I'm going to make a game plan for this upcoming week. So I'm excited. I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing as far as exercise goes. And again, just take a little bit closer look at my food. So if you haven't joined my Facebook group already, we'd love to have you join. We have 13,000 amazing, supportive, wonderful members who are there to answer your questions, give you support, and they share some great ideas on WW. So definitely head over, join my Facebook group. It's of course free to join and we'd love to have you be part of that community. If you're new to my channel, I'd like to welcome you. I do a weigh-in every single week. I discuss the workshop and I also share with you my weigh-in results. So definitely subscribe, hit the little bell so you're notified every time I upload a new video. That way you're not missing any. I would really appreciate a thumbs up on this one. And of course, leave those comments below. I want to hear how your week was. I love hearing your guys' successes or things that you need to work on on your journey. It really makes me feel part of the community a little bit more and makes me maybe not feel so bad about some of the things that happen when I weigh in on the scale at my workshop. So thank you guys so much for watching. Happy, happy Friday, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! Funny how the story goes, little hope of bigger dreams. Uh -huh.